what I'd really like to do, honestly, is to simply take um, a nice meaty scene of Sorcerer, Legendary Lives, Primetime Adventures, Rune Quest, Anthony, one of those Star Trek sessions that you guys did, um, or, or the Three Musketeers one with that system, um, and um, any of these other games that, that all of us here have played together, um, and say, okay, now, <laughs> I almost want to, maybe this is too contrived, I almost want to snip out like a good, solid, freaking, someone cares fight. Right, a, a fight scene where, where everybody cares about what's happening. And just take it in each of those and say, all right, how are these phenomena that I'm talking about organized here? In this game, we don't have hit locations for violent action. In this game over here, we do. In this game, there are rules for who talks when, and in this game, there aren't, and it's known that it's flexible, right? In this game, you know, it's different. And ideally, the only way I really can see any such thing happening is through us being aware of these issues and talking them through more casually and piecemeal in the discussions about the sessions, right? In the discussions about the sessions. Um, one of the things I envy greatly, and I'm beginning, you're, you're seeing me uh, adopt this, again, to reference Anthony's work, is this business where before we play, or even before we prepare to play, the person who's the primary organizer gets in front of the camera and says a bunch of stuff that they don't share with the people when they get together. You know, it's just their own reflections, their internal reflections of, oh, this is where I'm really psyched about this. And this is what, you know, I'm thinking about. And this is why I want to play this. Or, you know, this is the rule I'm going to change or something. And then we see them play. And then after play, crazy bastards with obviously nothing better to do. I don't know how you do this. But every person gets in front of the camera and, and talks about the session that they just played. And again, without consulting with one another. And then, of course, everybody gets to watch the whole thing. And it's, it's, it's in those kinds of discussions. Now, granted, one person just might want to enthuse about how they love their character, Gwendolyn, and then we all get embarrassed because they seem to love Gwendolyn too much. I mean, if you just want to, you know, if you just want to enjoy having played, that's cool. But if somebody also were to say, you know, Having played this, I really got a different take on that outcome authority business. You know, I never understood outcome authority. Ron keeps talking about outcome authority. I cannot understand for the life of me what he's on about. But now that I just played this game and that other game that we played last year, these games handle it totally different. And in isolation, I can see it now what he's after. And I know that Lorenzo was talking a lot about that regarding Troll Babe recently. And so, um, but I, I, it seems to me as though that sort of thing is best handled at that individual epiphany level or somebody who says, wait, you know, in that bit right there, I don't see how, I don't see how these ideas are accounting for that at all. I don't see where that is in this so-called model. You know, I, we did this. You can see us doing that. You can see me get weirded out during play right there. Or you can see me really get into it. So if it worked, then how come you're not talking about that? What's, you know, what's where's that? And so I, I just feel as though the analysis of the ideas or the right examples for these ideas are going to have to come out of individual processing. Does that make any sense? I, I can't imagine actually coming up with a curriculum. Yeah. Wait, wait the, audio first, sorry. Yeah, Yeah. sorry. Um, that's exactly what I wanted to say, your last words, which is how do you even teach this to people? 
Like that, it's it's so difficult because any other field, um, there is some way of like observing this, observing this phenomenon objectively, uh, is so difficult, or at least as objectively as possible. Is so difficult that I don't like. It's really really hard just to think about how are you going to teach, uh, how do you teach people about this um and well, obviously well, <laughs> that's that's what the whole website's about right i mean that's i know i know is, right? <laughs> so, you've thought about yeah. it about this for a long time it's just like for me it's just i i'm i'm really stuck there i don't know how to even talk about this to people that haven't gotten through the epiphany levels and i i wouldn't even know how to talk to past past versions of myself right. about this and just as a really brief side note, this is even more ruined by the fact that all these celebrity GMs with actors doing actual play <laughs> things that it's not it's acting like and so people watch that and go, Oh, that's role right, playing right. games. Yeah, Claudio, Claudio is like totally you're, No you're, TV he's talk, please. Thing. He's he's going after it with an axe. Um so But I don't watch TV. <laughs> Anthony's next. Not even that. that kind. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony's next. What's up? I just wanted to say that like the, the idea of the curriculum is what I was triggering on as well. And going back to the idea of that first, that first video and, and how it doesn't kind of have a hook for as video is, or, you know, for people who, who have thought about this. So instilling the desire even, or the excitement for, not only playing as many games as you can, but recognizing that they will feel different, that it's not all just like the game that you have. There's an excitement there that I find not here, but out there is often put out negatively. Like That's weird. Oh, well, yeah, look at those crazy geeks doing their crazy little trip, right? Right. Well, there's that, but there's also the here's ten games that are better than D and D, which, I mean, how do you even define better? But yeah, why when you say such a thing, right? Um, right, it, it it doesn't encourage me if I'm the D and D guy. It doesn't encourage me to try something new. It makes me defensive in many cases. Right, I, I've so, tried to avoid that assiduously. Actually, um, if right. uh, I know Helma has got a thing to say, but I just want to make sure that we're not uh, walking over anybody who up until this point wanted to chime in with, with any aspect of the videos that they thought that they had noted down that they wanted to talk about. Um, so just to pick some of the people who haven't talked much, Robbie or Alex or Herman. I saw Alex raise his hand oh, okay. before. Okay. Maybe. Well, right, everybody, know. Herman just, and Robbie and Alex all just raised their hands. So we're, <laughs> we're doomed. That's not, not, not talk all at the same time that that's uh, right. um, yeah. yeah um what i found i i, I found, found the subject most interesting but i had probably also because uh the way i was looking uh watching the videos i had some hard time at points to keep keep track of where i was and where i was going so i would um, and that's mostly may, maybe a presentation thing where i would have liked some sort of scheme or uh, some sort of oh yeah Oh yeah. Uh, like like oh, I'm I'm here in the story and there's these bits coming and I I, I had some yeah probably because well just starting a new new job and my head is full of other things besides uh, gaming and, and and things so I had some 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 hard time to keep track of okay I'm now here and so yeah super good it's point almost mostly an, an, an organizational thing more than I mean the content was nice and interesting and. But at times I had some some trouble following it, and would have liked to have some some little charts. Or uh, you're here, and this is the map you're on, the, the road you're well, on. I and, love those things. So working something out like that will definitely make a lot of sense. Um, Helma, I know that you're. I still have your. You know, you're you're hovering there. So Robbie, what was your your thought? Well, I mean, when when people were were talking about. Uh, teaching this as a curriculum, of course, I'm right there because I, yeah. I, yeah, I've, I'm doing it in the high school level. 
at least I, I kind of really launched into it last year and I'm going to be continuing to do it this year. But, you know, what I, um, you know, when I'm looking at this series, it was immensely useful to me. Part of me says like, well, when I'm in the middle of teaching a unit on tabletop role playing games, would I have my students watch part of it? I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think for me right now, it's more useful to me as a teacher where I can kind of uh, chew over some of this and then kind of use it in the classroom myself to kind of help in my in my explanation. But I mean, I would say that in terms of I, I do think that it's a worthy project to think about tabletop role playing games in a school curriculum. Uh, I think it's a extraordinarily uh, important medium and uh, important partly because of, of some of the things that you touch on here in terms of the way that it departs from uh, other media that students have been exposed to. And I would say that, that you know, what, what, I try to, what I try to do when I teach it is uh, I try to, as quickly as possible, get the students to the table right. and get them to actually be experiencing it and also in my classroom, I, th when I did this last year, I was sure that every table is playing a different game. And so, so they are immediately aware of, okay, I'm here at this table having this experience, but then they get to hear about during the course of this, that, you know, we have all these different games out there and that they lead to very different experiences. And, and then at the end of it, getting the groups to kind of talk up, talk about and kind of explain how their game operated, what the experience was like at their table. Yeah, full disclosure, Robbie and I actually talked over a lot of this curriculum before he applied it, but he then is the one who had to face the wolves with it. And um, I'm, for one, am looking forward to, as a teacher myself, I'm looking forward to, okay, now that you've actually taken it into, you know, the, to, to, to the wolf pack, now, what are your thoughts on how to do it? You know, now, what are your thoughts? What have we learned from applying it here? What did the students get out of it? What were things that they, they you know, had trouble getting out of it? And, um, and I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, this is obviously a long-term thing. You don't do this in, you know, a short term and then you're done. And then now you, you just know, you know, how you're going to be doing this with students over and over and it's really going to be valuable. Um, so, uh, but I, I really, I'm taking the long view on a lot of this. I really am. Um, so Alex, where were you at with this? Or Oh, I don't really have a lot to add. I mean, I think getting it intellectually and getting it in play are two fairly different things. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thoroughly. I mean, to me, talking about it at this level is ultimately something you do after you've experienced some play and ideally, you know, listens to me talking about play and recognizing enough of it to say, oh, all right. So this is what, you know, play is like and what it feels like. And this is the range perhaps, or some, some of the range, um, some of the considerations that I ran into um, just to pick some of those which are key and are very little to do with the rule set, um, I mean, the textual rule set, uh, when we switch, every time we changed players up in the RuneQuest game, there was a visible period of adjustment. And then shifting to Primetime Adventures, which is a very different rule set and with a different composition of people, that first session that I just posted you can see the gears grind more than once, you know, as in terms of how we're going to be talking and how we're going to be listening to each other. Since I know all the people involved, I'm pretty sure that our next round is going to be surprisingly smoother and surprisingly more comfortable with one another. At least I hope so. Pretty sure. But I'm going to call attention to that. That this is a reality that this, if we're not going to do that kind of slick performance-based play, then we need to recognize this as a feature and not as a, a deficit 
or as a failure or something that we should edit out, right? Oh, those two just mixed it up a little bit. Let's, let's edit that part out, right? Let's not do that. You know, let's, let's actually watch us work our way through learning to get along and to talk in the context of this particular rule set. 